You're welcome back to The Breakfast on PLOS TV Africa. We're now talking about uh, uh, cessation, the self-determination. Southeast, Southwest groups are pushing for secession in the country. And we know that thousands of people gathered in Ibadan, the capital of Oyo State, on Saturday to demand for Odudua Republic. The rally was led by a group known as the Ilano Odua. And uh, this is the latest in calls for self-determination by groups who say they represent ethnic nationalities. Now, there's Sunday Boho who has been pushing for a Yoruba nation. And there's uh, the indigenous people of Biafra, IPOB, who has been clamoring for uh, Biafra. And uh, the big question is, should Nigeria break up? Would restructuring be better? Or would we continue with the structure you know, should we continue with that structure that we currently have in the country? And uh, we have joining us to discuss this legal practitioner and public affairs analyst, Mr. Anthony Odiadi. Yes, he'll be joining us in just a moment. But that's really uh, the crux of our discussion this morning about all the several calls, the agitation in Nigeria, you know, for separate groups, separate regions, separate countries. And we've seen the presidency, we've seen uh, the Minister of uh, information, uh, Lai Mohammed, he has been speaking, asking Nigerians not to take that seriously, not to listen to it, saying there are more things that unite us as a country, as a people, than the things that divide us. And uh, just a few minutes ago, we had Tony Kolawole, who said that, in fact, since uh, independence, the, the, you know, the tension we've had in the country has been within ethnic groups, not you know, against several ethnic groups. We really will get clarification, you know, with our guests later on on the show. But that really is what we're talking about. Is Nigeria better united? Or are we better off, you know, with a Yoruba nation, an Igbo nation, a Hausa nation? Well, um, one thing that every now and then, maybe on social media or through on YouTube, you know, just different platforms, you always get to see the beauty that is Nigeria. Um, um, what's his name now? Uh, Tayo I know, I believe. Uh, that's his name, the videographer. Uh, made, uh, shot those very beautiful documentaries on the Haina men of Nigeria. Yes. He's also done some kind of street fighting. He, he does a lot of um, these very, very beautiful documentaries um, that just show you the beauty that truly is. When we say that Nigeria is filled with beauty in our diversity and culture and, and history YouTube and all that. YouTube is doing a great that. job of oh, it is showing so us that part, seeing of Nigeria. that part of Nigeria. What then hurts is how we have all of that and we have continued to let it you know, go to waste. We've continued to let our insecurity and our politics and our tribal differences and our religious differences to blind us, you know, and keep us away from truly, you know, enjoying what Nigeria is. Nigeria is, is a beautiful nation. Indeed. Um, and I would agree when people say that there is beauty in our, in our diversity. Um, the vice president says that, you know, a couple you know, more times than, uh, than normal. Um, there, is, there is that, you know, part. But it shouldn't also stop you from asking the question, is Nigeria really working? Is it working um, for us all? Is it working right from you know, our foundation, right from our independence to the 1999 constitution to you know, the, the, um, you know, the, the uh, um, agreements that has put us together um, as a nation? Uh, to when the British decided, you know, how we were going to be set up and who was going to be taking charge. Is Nigeria really, really working? Mm. Can it work? Yes. But is it working? Look, I mean, take a look at what you're seeing on your screen. They're basically clamoring for the Odua nation. You can see thousands or hundreds of, you know, Yoruba people who've come out, you know, saying this is what they want, that they're, they're done with all the insecurity in their lands, carrying placards and, you know, you know wearing T-shirts, basically. They've, they've, they've come all out with this, saying this is what they want. They want a separate Yoruba nation. Really, where do we go from here? We have, we'll have a track up here, you know, leaders of this movement speaking and letting us know what exactly they want. I was kidnapped on the way to Adwekis. I spent six days there. I really don't want to witness that again. Since I regained my freedom, I've lost count of Yoruba people. 
that have been kidnapped, maimed, raped, tortured, and killed in the process. We are a people who strive for the development of the community, not of the individual, like other. And that is why our departure is imminent. We are mixed up with some ethnicities that are devoted to the perpetuation of the individual. Well, um, very interesting, you know, clip there. And, um, you know, the man who said he has been kidnapped, um, and he, who he was kidnapped rather, and he spent about six days there. Um, of course, our hearts go out to him and his family. Um, I don't think anybody wants to experience that. I don't think anybody who, you know, who is living and working in Nigeria today wants to experience what it feels like to be kidnapped. Um, and so we will never belittle the severity of the security situations that we're currently dealing with. Yes. I can imagine those families who struggle to, you know, annually, they all of their family members annually don't make up to, you know, five million naira. Getting one of their, you know, their uh, siblings kidnapped, maybe because the person is a banker or the person is a doctor, uh, struggling basically to keep, you know, food on the table, and then they demand 50 million naira. Where, you, where is that family going to raise that money from? There's no rich uncles, there's nobody who's going to give you 50 million naira to, you know, get that family member out. There's a lot of people who have suffered um, from the level of insecurity that we're currently dealing with. Um, and we cannot really, really, I think it will be fair to say that this is maybe the most chaotic that I've seen Nigeria with regards to insecurity. But also, the, the clips and those people who are gathered there, um, it, it, I think it's also fair to say that they don't necessarily represent the views 100% of all of the people of the Southwest, a lot of people in Yoruba you know, Kingdom. Same way the IPOB and ESN and Masob and, and the likes and the agitation don't necessarily represent the views of all Ebos. of the Igbos yes. and everybody you know, from the Southeast. But are their concerns genuine? Do the things that they are saying make sense? Do the reasons why they want self-determination make sense? Mm -hmm. You would, of, of course, also have to uh, you know, agree with them that they have strong points why they are making these demands because Nigeria, for them, is not working. You know, the, the, the levels that they as a people should, uh, that, that, that's what they believe. The levels that they should have gotten to as a people, as a tribe, as a, as a section, um, they maybe would have been able to achieve a whole lot more with the resources available to them, but they cannot because they are a part of this entity called Nigeria. Um, the same thing with the Southeast. They feel like they have been untreated for so many years, or, or, um, well, poorly treated rather, for so many years. They feel like they have been sidelined for so many years. They feel like they have been, um, even right from, you know, after the Civil War, they have, uh, Nigeria has continued to suppress them. And they believe that if they can get out of this entity called Nigeria, mm -hmm. they will be able to have um, a more, you know, flourishing life. The Igbos will be able to thrive in any part of the world. And they say it all the time, that their businesses will do better and all of that. Those who have the argument that um, um, crises happen, you know, within you know every section of the country, that Yorubas have fought each other, Igbos have fought each other, that you know Northerners have fought each other before, mm -hmm. you know, I, I don't necessarily agree with that, you know, and I would say that that is not a good enough reason for you to say no, don't go anywhere because if you go, the corruption will still stay with you. It's not necessarily, you know, a good enough reason. Or, or, or no, don't go anywhere because you know you guys have been fighting each other since. So when See, you go, you continue I'm, fighting. I'm, I'm really eager to bring in our, our legal practitioner guests because we need to look into the legal implications of the secessionist or movement or you know clamors for self determination. You know, I found that Nigeria is a signatory to this act, and they've actually, you know, gone ahead to domesticate it. It's the Charter, the African Charter on Human and People's Rights Ratification and Enforcement Act. Nigeria domesticated this act, and by implication, what it means is that, in fact, let's read from Article 20, uh, subsection 1 of the act. It provides expressly that people shall have an unquestionably and inalienable right to self-determination. And that, you know, self-determination is a fundamental right of any, you know, people to freely determine their own political status and freely pursue their own social, economic, and cultural development, right? So if self-determination is guaranteed by this act, which Nigeria is a signatory to, that means that parties in Nigeria, people in Nigeria can freely decide to break away.
Mm. So I don't know if... On paper. I don't, exactly. I don't know if we were sleeping when we signed that document. Because if you check, you know, all the documents, all the treaties that Nigeria is a signatory to, and just how they break the laws and stipulations of those acts, it'll make you really ask questions like, why do you sign this? Why are you a signatory to this if you don't, if you're not ready to obey them? No. So if Nigeria is a signatory to this and has domesticated this, meaning you're saying that you've signed this, that... Nigerians should be able to break away. Why then should the government be, you know, attacking, you know, people who say they want to break out of Nigeria, they want self-determination, they want to find, found their own state, their own country? Well, Do you understand? Because that would be Nigeria speaking again. That would that would seem to be hypocritical yeah, because you actually the, signed this and say you have the right to go ahead and have your own state. Yeah, the, the government is not necessarily attacking. You know, well, maybe except the they South, say it's the a sessionist and, and they begin and, to arrest. And, uh, and what really that. is that? Um, well, good to know we have our guest, Mr. Anthony Odiadi. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you very much for joining us on the breakfast this morning. We're speaking about self determination. So many ethnic groups in Nigeria are asking to have their own independent state. And we wanted to get in your perspective regarding the law, seeing that Nigeria as a country has actually signed the African Charter on Human and People's Rights. So if Nigeria has domesticated this act and it's saying that people of Nigeria have the right to, you know, form their own political entity, their own social economic, you know, you know, group or body or state. What really is it and where do we stand when we have situations where the government, you know, can get to gatherings like that and basically begin to tear gas them and arrest members? Thank you. The, <clears throat> the idea of the charter actually to put certain rights in the hands of the people who have come to form nations, particularly following the partition of Africa. After the partition of Africa into states, a lot of groups were linked together within state boundaries that were defined by the European powers in 1884. So the African Charter of People's and Human Rights, you know, now seems to recognize that. Every group must have the right to their own self-identity. They must have the right to the way they want to live and survive as a people. And that right must be acceded to by Africans too, you know, as a fundamental right. So just like you rightly said, Nigeria signed that data and by doing has domesticated the, the rights as part of the couple of laws within the Nigerian state. Now, there's the political will to implement the rights that you have domesticated, and that's when Nigeria has failed. This whole thing is playing out in the political arena. The question will be, why are we having consistent education? Why do we have separatist impulses within the Nigeria state? You have to remember that Nigeria started as an amalgamation, an amalgamation between the Lagos colony, the Southern Protectorate, and the Northern Protectorate, which occurred in 1914. And then thereafter, in 1939, the Southern Protectorate was split into two, Eastern and Western region, and the third did not become the Northern region. So, as a nation, we have not been able to evolve and you know, reconcile some of our differences into a functional entity that everybody will see as one. That has been a failure. Failure of governance, you know, failure of people integrating properly, and the sense of alienation, the sense of marginalization, and the crisis that we have you know, been going through coming towards uh, where we are today, the independence, the civil war, and all the struggles for power that we are trying to do. That's why you find that the agitation has been persistent. Now, if you speak of, if you speak of agitation, separatist agitation in Nigeria, your mind first goes to Biafra, because it was Biafra that first 
put this to test. Put it to test. And the civil war was fought over it. After the civil war, we seem to have come back. Nonetheless, the feeling of marginalization, the failure of the Nigerian state to accommodate the aspirations of the group is what normally fits into this idea that people believe that they should go their own way so that they may be better able to realize their potential. Mr. Odiadi, Mr. Odiadi, yes. I need to draw your attention to this. Taking a look at you know, world politics, you find other countries who are clamoring for self-independence, self-determination. You have the classical case in Africa of uh, you know, South Sudan. We know that in 2011, the United States recognized them as an independent state, you know, breaking away from the country. But when it comes to Nigeria now, I like that you reference the Biafran Civil War because that's one case that comes to mind. And it seems that that event in history and all the deaths and destruction just paid a bad picture for Nigeria that makes it seem synonymous to death, destruction, and war and conflict. Is it possible for the Nigerian states to have, you know, breakaway states to have self-determination without the violence that we saw back in the 1960s? Of course, it's very possible. Nothing says that people cannot come together and negotiate the structure of the state. We've had it done several times. We've had the national conference in which the things that worry people were put you know, before the collective, the structure was before, revenue formula, um, and the state structure, bureaucratic component, all of this, you know, the security architecture of the country, all of these were, were born. By the way, earlier on before the Civil War, we had an Aburi conference. The Aburi Conference stated how Nigeria should be structured. Mm -hmm. And all the parties that were there signed. But when they came back, you know. They, they interpreted they, they it as they, as they will. <laughs> yes. The Nigerian authority released the name. And that you were, that were informed with what actually moved the country to the war. So I'm saying that it is very easy for the country to sit down and say anybody who is agitating. Look into the problem because the first thing is we are better off together as a people. But if the people begin to have the sense of alienation, if they have the sense that their 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 purposes are not properly, you know, taken care of within the Nigerian tradition, or that they believe that they are oppressed or suppressed, all right, then you must look at the way that other nations have done. Our colonial masters, United Kingdom, has devolved power to entities like Scotland, Wales, North Ireland, you know, and then, um, and once again, when they were tired of the European Union, they did it. There's okay. no point in what happened here. The most important thing is the feedback, discourse. We are having a dialogue in Nigeria, and that's why we keep talking about fighting, fighting, fighting. Are you aware that the the, the activity in the is, is a separate import in themselves. The idea of the group says we do not recognize Nigerian state, we do not recognize Nigerian values, we want to be left alone. It's also, you know, well, it's a um, Mr. Odiadi, I, I don't know if you, you know, I don't know if. Um, it's very important for us to sit down and dialogue. We are not dialoguing, we use violence to resolve everything, we deploy the army to go and fight, and that's wrong. Well, the, the perspective, you know, like you just mentioned from Northern Nigeria might be a little different uh, from uh, what it is in the Southwest and in the Southeast. But, you know, it's also, you know, a good point that you made. You know, we should also maybe also squeeze in the conversation of Spain and Catalonia at a time like this. You know, they also are having their own struggles. Uh, but I want you to, you know, uh, speak on, you know, why it seems like we're at the height of these conversations on self-determination. Uh, 10 years ago, it maybe wasn't this bad, but in the last few years, we've had these conversations more than ever before, and we've had more sections of the country join in and also, you know, share their own, you know, uh, cries for self-determination. What do you think may have changed in the last few years? One of the things that changed is, one of the things that has changed, one of the things that has cost me is the failure of internal security. The system has shown that life is 
qui en est situé, the economic downturn which has been pushed up, and the feeling that certain people are not protected while others are taking a separate time. You can see the conflict of the of the capital and the and the farmer occurring in various parts of the state. And many people believe that they can protect themselves better. That's why you saw things like Amitya from coming up. You saw things like um, uh, Western uh, Security Network. You saw things like um, uh, Ibivago. And all of these things coming up. These are aspects of self-help and self-protection. And how do you get through with that? Except you have your own territorial authority. Territorial authority is and sovereignty. OK. Um the, the, response, the response from the government always is, and it was one of the things that we shared in the news this morning, that secession should be ignored. You've also mentioned that we continue to use brute force to uh, quell any discussion on, on secession. Um, from, the, from the signs that you see, is it looking like, you know, regardless of how much it is held, you know, this is something that is very likely to still occur, and the government is only just delaying you know, the, you know, the timing? Yes, I put, I put the government sits down to address the reasons why people are debating and seeking to separate. The impulse will remain, the tendencies will be more. It will not be something that the army can solve because the army is made up of Nigerians. Except you want to import a separate uh, army from outside to come and export a pacification in those areas where people are seeking. To, 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 to go the separate way. And that's why you said you were talking about you know, some confederation, some arrangement in which the center, the power of the center to appropriate so much importance, to enforce certain code from its alienating to others, is being limited. So that's why the government must put down rather than dismissively say it's not secessionist. You have to call people to the wrong table. When people come to the roundtable and dialogue, you get to know the reasons for which they are seeking to leave the country. Now we have an um, airport, we have the Uruguay Republic, we have a Niger Delta Republic, we have all manner of republics coming out. You know, there must be a reason why people want to go. Or there must be a reason why they're thinking that the federation as constituted is not representative of their interests, nor does not help them to reach their own aspirations. So, and the world is not going to stand idly by if people are compelled or forced to be in, a, in an arrangement they find oppressive. And that's why you saw South Sudan going, you saw East Timor, you saw um, Eritrea, yes. Slovakia is there. They sat down, decided and went away. Because Slovakia is there. They sat down and went away. Yes, there were some conflicts. But they moved on. You know, so a multi ethnic country like Nigeria must realize that you cannot possibly together except you have a framework in which each group has a sense of belonging. Okay. So Mr. Adiadi, if you if you're saying we need to have a framework to make this work and, and you've agreed that the agitations of these, you know, groups are justified based on the insecurity in the country, marginalization and all the other factors. Would we need to convene another national conference to work our constitution to make sure that everybody feels, you know, part of the team? Yes, I agree. But, what, you know, the point would be, why do you continue to reinvent the wheel? There is a document that I have not been looked at. The document of 2014 is there. Bring that document. Bring uh, a collection of people from across the country, delegates. Let them look at the document again. Does that document took almost nine months to prepare. You know, eminent Nigerian, um, bureaucrats, professionals, we are all put together. So study the document and take out the gold nuggets in the document. It will make us, it will take us from where we are to a better, a better place. You know, so we don't need to be reinventing the wheel, becoming new conferences every time. We have a document that can guide us. But if, if the government says, we don't want to work with that document. Okay, by all accounts, we have a new conference. Let people come and speak. You must wow. have people to dialogue. You cannot, you cannot assume that Nigerian army will be able to continue to shoot its way 
into enforcing unity across the country. Well, um, I'm, it also is very you know, important to look for the level of trust that Nigerians have in whatever new conference. I know that, you know, the, I think the governor of uh, Kaduna State, Nasser Arufai, uh, was the head of a committee uh, with regards to um, um, restructuring, I believe, I hope I'm not wrong. Uh, but, you know, we, we, of course, will continue to have these conversations and see where we go. Um, Nigerians' prayers, I believe, are that we continue to seek peace and we achieve that uh, peaceful nation that we crave. Thank you very much, Anthony Odiadi, uh, for your time this morning. Thank uh, you. For speaking with us. Thank you so much. Yes, I, I, I really hold on to that, Osawege. No matter what it is, peace should be the core. Nobody will want a repeat of what happened, you know, during the Civil War, 60, 70, 70, right? Mm. I mean, very, very disturbing and dark time in our country's history. And we've seen other countries, you know, that clamored for self-determination. South Sudan, like I mentioned, just how much, how, how much of a humanitarian crisis there is and, you know, how much aid is needed, the hunger... It's just not a sight that we want to see replay here in this well, country. So we should have peace at the back of our minds. Whether it's self-determination, we can do that peacefully. I mean, I love how you brought up the issue of Brexit. I mean, you didn't see people of the UK or soldiers in the UK, soldiers of any other European country, you know, come up to fight and clash and, you know, people fighting. There was nothing like that. It was all through deliberations. This was discussions that took time. They set deadlines and they, they were able to, you know, find a way to, to, to break out peacefully. So peace really should be the core focus, whatever it is. That we're I agree, for. but I would also quickly say that besides those who they, you know, the government has continued to, you know, uh, um, shut down, besides mm -hmm. those who are agitating for self-determination, there is also a growing number of people who are angry with Nigeria. And it's not because they want self-determination. They're frustrated with Nigeria because of what we currently are dealing with as a country, the level of insecurity in the country, the level of poverty in the country, Those the level just of want unemployment the in the country. <laughs> yes, and there's many out. and more and more people who want out. They are seeking visas yes. to go to some other country that they can leave and actually breathe, that they can have 24 hours power supply, they can have proper health care, they can have a life. So there is many of those people that are growing. They're not looking for self-determination, but Indeed. it is also a ticking time bomb. And we saw that in the NSAS protest, the number of young jobless people who are, are frustrated angry. and angry with yes. the system. Yes. If you look around Lagos today, drive around Lekki Phase 1, there is thousands of young men doing absolutely nothing but staying alive. I saw the um, documentary I Want Boys over the weekend. Yes, I did. Oh, my God. There is thousands of these people that are frustrated with the system. They have one smile a day, and that is the only one that they will have. They all day. had a dream in their hearts. They all were going somewhere. They had a destination. They wanted to be music artists. They wanted to just thrive. But the system just finds a way to yeah. shut you down. So when you, when you say, okay, well, let's ignore the ones who are looking for self-determination, the IPOBs and the Odua People's Congress and the likes, and the ones in the North, North Nigeria, like our guest mentioned, you still have to come and face the ones who aren't, you know, clinging to any of these secessionist groups. Mm -hmm. They are frustrated with Nigeria. They have had family members killed. They have had family members kidnapped. They don't have jobs. They are tired no of this system. Their businesses are struggling and suffering because when they try and struggle to make it to earn a living every single week, Tax you have can come to tax your shop and take exactly. everything you've, you've earned or so you know, is, every sales you've made for the day. So is the country working? And it's not because of tribal or religious sentiments. Is the country itself working? Aside those who are earning from corrupt ways or those who have legitimate means of making money, even those who are making money legitimately and still live in the country, is it working for them? See, if I any think... Nigerian has a terminal illness today, where do they run to? And I'm talking of a Nigerian who has a regular job as a lawyer, a banker, or a, or a doctor, or anything. Go for me. Really, like you've said, whether it's secessionist movement, self-determination, restructuring, whatever it is, the bone of contention is that Nigeria needs to work for everybody. Yeah. Imagine if we... Okay, look at, look at the guy who came out of protest. We played the, 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 the track earlier. His own concern was that he was kidnapped security challenges i mean if we lived in a country obviously even in the most developed country there's gun violence there's it's not like there's any utopia where you know things are 
100% perfect. But if you had a country where systems were working, where you don't have to be afraid that, you know, SARS will stop you, that I'm taking a laptop to work and they won't download illegal apps on my phone and say, I put it there and I use them. If, you know, we had opportunities, if I as a woman can, with my certificates, with my competence and skills, get to a job, get to a company and get a job without the guy asking me for sexual favors, if we can have a country that works, I don't think anybody will say they want a separate country or that they want you know, their own agitation, they want to leave. Everybody would love to stay. Because I have friends in the US, they complain about monthly bills, the taxes they pay yeah. for heat, for this, for that. It is but it's drowning. A system, but it's a system that works. And do we, have a, works, do we have yeah. a government in power currently that shows that it cares about your complaints? I had a sibling who came back to Nigeria sometime last week, one of my siblings. Um, uh, they were on their way to um, Ogun State yesterday, and I called them every hour. To check yeah. that they're safe. Yeah. Oh, my. Because, they, because for some reason, taking a road trip in Nigeria right now is like endangering yourself. That's what it is. All right. Yeah. Short break. When we come back, we're talking about other people who are frustrated with the system. Mm. This Beta time, complaints. <laughs> they are uh, cab hailing services, uh, drivers and owners of those vehicles in Nigeria currently who are angry with the system and with their mother companies. We'll talk to um, uh, our guest uh, after the short break here on The Breakfast. Stay with us.